Okay, so what's up, Jermaine Kaduk? Once again, this is JJ Kasantai, your host. And I would like to um Yeah, you know, muna natin dito. I would like to thank our discussants for today's topic, okay? Pero regarding po dito sa basics of sound production. Okay, tingnan natin kung nandiyan na sila. <laughs> si Norby talaga si Norby. <laughs> Oy, Norby, nagsimula tayo mag live stream. <laughs> okay ka lang diyan. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, Okay, so ito yung pang tatlo sa ating um, Bura Bura live stream Okay, along basic of sound production Dito po sa uh, tawag ba dito? Sa course ng uh, BTLED Okay, ano yan guys yung ano yan? Yung course code ninyo? What's that? Uy <laughs> Ano ayo? <laughs> Di niyo alam yung course ko. <laughs> Di mo na alam. <laughs> ano TLE ano siya? TLE what? 21. Tama? TLE 21 ba 'yon? Oo. So, well anyway, ang course description niya is audio production. Okay, so sa mga viewers natin diyan, magandang hapon. Okay, this is Joe Sage Kasantai and time check is already 3:43 in the afternoon. Medyo na natagalan kami. Nagkaroon kasi kanina ng mga abirya, no? Isabay niyo na yung <laughs> Aram niyo na kato. So, parang-parang yan. <laughs> okay. So, I think we have six discussion for today's topic po regarding po sa installation and setup na kinakailangan pong matutunan ng ating mga viewers, lalong-lalo na po itong mga viewers natin na emerging audio producers. Okay? So, hindi natin patatagalin. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you our discussions for today's topic. Okay? First, yan. Nandun po, Sir Vincent Pitas. Hello, sir. Bate ka po. Hello sir. Hi everyone. Shout out nga pala kay Mama, kay Papa, <laughs> um, kay Bornok, yung alaga ko pong Astro at kaya kay Atimio, yung alaga ko pong Manok. <laughs> Alright! So shout out sa mga alaga mo pre. <laughs> okay, thank you very much Sir Vincent. Feed us. And we have Sir um, Christian Carillo. Hello sir, pati ka po. Hello po. Hello guys sa mga viewers natin. Uh, nice po. Nice ko po palang batiin yung mga kabarangay ko dyan sa Aliang, Ligaw City. Ayun, shout out sa mga taga-kabarangay. Ano? Ba'nong barangay yun? Aliang po, sir. Okay, shout out sa mga taga-barangay Aliang, Ligaw City. Thank you very much, Sir Christian. We have here again, Ma'am... Sinati, close ko muna ito, hindi ko mabasa. <laughs> Ma'am Rhea Bitangkor. Ma'am, bati ka po. Hi, sir. Hi, sirs. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. And we have ma'am Priselda Rogelio. Ma'am, bati ka po. Hello, everyone. Tawating nga pala sa mga kabebetay ko dyan. Mag-aaral muna ako. Sorry. <laughs> Pamay na, now na. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am Crisel. And Sir Darwin Carillo, bati ka po, sir. Hi sa lahat ng mga katrok ko dyan sa labas, dito sa loob ng bahay. And hello sa DUST. Sana mapili niyo ako. That's all. <laughs> Alright! So, ano pa DUST? Pili na! <laughs> yeah, sir Darwin Carillo. Thank you very much, sir. And, yan. Hello, Ma'am Norby. Eh, be, text text sa sarak. <laughs> Hello, sir. Good afternoon po sa... Hi, good afternoon po sa lahat ng nanonood. Um, shout out po. Um, shout out po pala sa lahat na... <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Yon. So, double, triple echo. Anyway, uh, this is a problem uh, palagi yan. Uh, technical problem po pagdating sa <laughs> video and audio solutions po sa live stream. Anyway, so mababa ang aming upload speed. But nonetheless, we will continue uh, this live streaming sa lahat po ng ating mga viewers at sa alang-alang ng ating mga ka-edu. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, okay? So, wag kayo nga LS and... We'll be right back.
Okay, so what's up, Girl Makhead? This is your host, Cedric Sensai, and welcome back to our Bura Bura live stream session. So, ladies and gentlemen, so for today's topic, po, okay, um, we will start on the installation and setup, okay? And our discussant will be Mam Rea Bitangkor. Mam, I think it's your turn, na po. So, madami na tayo mga viewers right now. Thank you very much for, for viewing, and I'm giving now the floor to Mam Rea. Mam. Sorry, sir. Paputer, 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 paputer. Okay, let's start na po. Okay na po ba, sir? Start Opo. na po ako? Yes po. Okay na pa. <laughs> Joke lang. Sige. Go ahead. Ano yan, hindi mo mabasa? Huwag <laughs> mo nang basahin. Dapat meron kang binabasa dyan. Pero diretso na tayo. <laughs> Putol yung signal ni ano yan. Putol-putol yung signal ni ma'am. Okay. So, ayan mga kapatid. Biglang bumagal ang ating mga signal. <laughs> okay. So, check natin ito mamaya. Hintay natin makabalik si ma'am. Okay? Short break muna tayo. Hello, sir. Okay na, Rhea. Okay na, Moy. Okay. So, I think nakabalik natin yung discussion. Okay na po, Ma'am Raya? Uy! <laughs> ano ba hinahanap ko dyan? <laughs> okay na, Ma'am? Eh, we, we can start na po. <laughs> ako na, ako na mag-discuss na ito. <laughs> Wala naman yung discuss at natin. Okay, sige. So, simulan ko na dito, ladies and gentlemen, kasi medyo nawawala si ma'am. Okay, so let's start here sa ating ano yan. Tulungan ko na lang siya mamaya kasi medyo, medyo nawawala talaga yung internet ano yan, connection. Okay, so, kamusta ba kayo dyan? Okay lang ba kayo? <laughs> okay, so... Regarding here sa installation and setup po. Um, sige, sige, setup. Sa computers is importante dito, discuss naman to sa atin last time yung mga equipments na dapat kinakailangan nating ma-install dito, okay? Okay, so hindi natin dito ituturo kung paano magkabit-kabit. Kasi alam niyo na 'yon kasi bitilad kayo. So tinuruan kayo kung paano mag-install ng mga 'yan. Okay, maliban na lang sa mga special parts, lalong-lalo na kung mag-upgrade kayo ng PC. But regarding dito sa ano 'yan, sa tawag ba dito? Sa setup. Okay? So, sabi dito, kung mapapansin niyo here, okay? Ang uh, importante yung symmetry, guys, sa loob ng studio. Uh, kasi, uh, hindi pwede na basta ka lang maglagay ng tawag ba dito? Ng monitor. Okay? Hindi ka pwedeng maglagay lang dyan ng, 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 ng um, gamit mo na hindi po siya actually measured. Okay? So, for example, here, nakabalik na ba si Ma'am Rhea? Dapat si Ma'am Rhea na na ito eh. Ma'am Rhea, hello. <laughs> so regarding here sa studio, ano yan, monitor placement. So kung mapapansin niyo here, 
sa first part nito, okay, um, ang kagandahan sa setup ng monitor is that it should be equilateral. Take note mga ka-eduk, okay? It should be equilateral. Ibig sabihin, okay, uh, the same yung distance coming from the left and right side of the monitor papunta po dito sa inyong ulo. Okay? So, dapat, um, ang siyang technique dyan is kumukuha ng salamin. Yung so, sala, so glass baga, inilalagay dito. Pag nakita mo na yung ano yan, ang left monitor mo, likewise yung right monitor here sa likod mo. And that is a correct symmetry. Pero, kung gusto mo talagang eksaktong-eksakto, ang pinaka-the best dyan is, kumuha ka na ano yan, tape measure. Mm -mm. Tapos, o kaya ruler or meter stick, so kulon mong mara, equilateral. Dapat kasi talaga yan, equilateral ang tapak ng measurement. Hindi pwedeng basta-basta ka lang dyan maglagay ng speaker. Hindi pwede yun. Okay? So, and with regards po sa ano yan, sa paglagay po ng monitor speaker, okay? Importante po na medyo at least ang um, I think ang um, one ruler sa dingding. For example, ito yung speaker ninyo, i-adjust nyo yung ang um, monitor ninyo, at least one ruler bago doon sa dingding. Bakit? Nagba-bounce pack po kasi yung base. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo, pag kayo naglagay ng napakalapit na monitor sa, sa may wall, parang nadudoble yung tunog ng ano yan, yung tunog ng base, yung low frequency, which is pangit. Hello, Ma'am Rayera, kabalik ka na? <laughs> Naka-off mic mo, Be. <laughs> Sorry po. Okay na, Be? Okay, pagpatuloy mo na. Dito na tayo, dito na tayo sa studio monitor setup. Okay? Para mas mapadali yung discussion natin. Okay? Come on, Ma'am. So, hi guys, I am Ray Mibitangkor and I'm going to discuss the studio monitor placement. So, when it comes to placement of the monitor, Sir? Sige lang, diretso lang. Um, there is a few simple things that hindi ko po sir nakita yung PowerPoint. Hindi mo talaga yung makikita, mali yung pagkakagawa mo. <laughs> Sabi ko sa laki-lakihan eh. Hindi po sa... Wala ka bang separate copy dyan? <laughs> Dapat may separate copy kayo eh, di ba? Para mas madali. Naglalag rin po sir. Oo, oh, naglalag talaga yan. <laughs> Sige, mabagal yung net. Okay, so anyway, so ako nalang magpatuloy na ito ma'am. Okay. So, sinabi ko na rin kanina regarding po sa studio monitor na um, with regards po sa distance niya, it should be equilateral. Yun lang tatandaan ninyo, equilateral. And then po, kinakailangan natin i-adjust at least one ruler okay, sa likod po ng dingding para hindi masyadong base yung tunog. Kasi ang dami niyan eh, naglagay na sila ng, ano, ng, ng equalizer sa loob ng studio. Inequalize nila yung DBX po na ano yan, um, drive track talagang ano yan, inayos na nila. Gumamit pa sila ng microphone, yung RTA microphone, pero hindi nila talaga ma-adjust ma ng maayos yung sound quality. The problem is just placement <laughs> nung, nung, nung monitor speaker. May mga ganun pong senaryo. Yung di talaga actually yung kinakailangan bumili ng napakaraming gamit. It's just proper placement po sa loob. Okay? So sabi dito, set up your desk so that your speaker are away from walls and core. Ayun ba ko oh. Napakalinaw naman yung pagkaka ang um, lagay ni Ma'am Neto. So, yun nga sabi ko, at least 12 inches, okay? Verify studio monitor orientation. So, ano ito? I-check niyo kung gumagana yung left, i-check niyo kung gumagana yung right, okay? So, meron tayong pan-check niyan actually, yung yung ginagawa, ginagawa ng mga ano yan, ng mga emerging producer. Yung <laughs> yung Dolby, ano yan? Dolby Music mga chine-check nila yung maganda yung quality ng left and right studio. Diba guys, tinrain nyo na yun dati. 
Ano? Yung Dolby. Nagtry na kayo nun? Sa YouTube? Di ba may ganun? Di pa? Okay. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, ang pag-verify po ng studio orientation, ang pinaka-importante dito actually is the um, gumagana ba yung upper and lower. Let's say, um, gumagana yung tweeter, then yung whooper. Ibig sabihin, yung high and low frequency. So, paano ito test Ang pinaka-the best po talaga is dapat gumamit kayo ng pink noise. Opo, pink noise. Yan. Baka mak makolora na naman tayo pag, bata pag, pag, pag pink aram na. <laughs> Alam, ibig kong sabihin, guys, we need that pink noise. Yung noise baga na parang ang tunog ganito. Shhh! Yung parang ganun ang tunog. So, yun yung chine-check, then ipiniplay para po lumabas doon sa uh, inyong speaker. And then, actually, if you're going to do ano yan, um, tawag ko dito, equalization, dun din ang ginagamit. Okay? Para mas gumanda yung setup. Okay? Hello, Ma'am Rhea. <laughs> Uy. Yes, okay sir. na mga signal mo? Okay? So, proceed na tayo, Ma'am. Dito ka na po. Oh, Nababasa sir. mo na? Yes, po. So, your speaker should form an equilateral triangle with your listening position. So, this is the middle position between two sides of stereo system where the speakers overlap and it is the stereo image will be the best. So, creating the sweet spot. So, tinatawag pong sweet spot ito kasi perfect po yung music or the sound kapag kalumabas sa speaker. So, simple angle or toe in each speaker so that the tweeters form an equilateral triangle. So, as you can see in the picture po, um, may angle po siya na Mm -mm. Um, triangle, may shape siyang triangle. Yun po yung susundin na um, angle. So, that is, the speaker are the same distance from each other as they are from you. Okay. Let's proceed. So, next slide. The high frequency driver should be the same height as your ears. So, ibig sabihin po, um, yung mga speaker or the loudspeakers po, dapat daw po is same height as your ears. Because yes po. Dapat because talaga. Because of this, you can more accurately hear what is happening if the high frequencies are directed at your ears. Yan. So, ito yung rason kung bakit hindi mo mamix so, ng maayos. So, what created the sweet spot <laughs> Sit down and make sure that. <laughs> Nag overlap si ma'am. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, ito ito. Napaka lead down nito naman explanation dito. Na dapat po kapantay po ng inyong ear. Yung Twitter. Or yung high frequency. Ibig sabihin, yung. Kasi ang isang speaker, monitor speaker, mayroong whooper sa baba. Tapos may high driver sa taas. Yun dapat kapantay ng tenga nyo. Okay na, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay, proceed po. Okay na po ba, sir? Okay na, diretso na. Next, situate your mix position systematically. So the center of the wall provides a more balanced listening position. So as you can see um, in the picture, so may mga arrows which is meron din po yan mga um, specific um, distance we're in. Um, the same distance from the sides of the room. So, if your left speaker is six feet from the wall to the left and the two feet 
from the wall behind. So your right feet six feet from the wall to the right and to the and two feet from the wall behind. Yun talikod daw po is two feet left behind sa um, right and left is six feet. So by centering your mixed position. Your monitor system will provide more reliable, low-frequency intelligibility in a rectangular room. So, next slide. The speaker should be a different distance from the wall than from the walls on either side. So, just like it's not a good idea to set up your mixed position in a corner and make sure that the distance from the speaker to the wall behind, it is different from the distance or from the side wall closet to it. For example, um, example po dito is the picture shown. Yeah. Um, two feet from behind and three feet in po from left and side. Um, yeah. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. So, Yes, sir. So, connecting studio monitors to a computer. So, we have here an image where the audio interface, a microphone, and a, desk, um, a computer connected with the audio interface. And the audio interface is also connected to your microphone and to your speakers. So, ayan po yung um, mga tables and mga equipments po in the audio production. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. So, it at is least much better na. to use a USB audio. <laughs> lit ka pa dyan. <laughs> lit na lit ka talaga. Nawawa <laughs> naman. Anyway, Ayos na ma'am. Thank you very much po. Opo, kasi malinaw naman yung pagkaka-detailed natin dito ng ano yan. Nagpalakpakan yung... <laughs> Oo. Nagpalakpakan yung mga grupo mo. Okay. Detalyado naman po kasi ladies and gentlemen yung ating ano yan. Um, dito sa uh, discussion ni ma'am sa PPP niya. So, ilinawin natin ulit kanina yung pagkaka-explain ni ma'am. Okay? Kasi medyo delay siya. Ang tatandaan lang natin ladies and gentlemen, unang-una po is equilateral triangle. Wala po tayo masyadong isipin regarding po sa positioning. It's just, it should be equilateral po sa inyong ulo. Okay? And then, next po is kinakailangan po natin magkaroon ng ganito pong uri ng positioning po ng ating monitor speaker. The tweeter or the high frequency driver should always align in your ear. Okay, yun lang. Yun lang ang tatandaan nyo. And of course, dito po, we need symmetrical. Ang, ang problema dito kasi, kapag yung yung kwarto mo is hindi po symmetrically build. May problem yan. Bakit kasi kinakailangan symmetrical uh, yung position po nung ano yan? Dapat nasa gitna. Kasi po, nagbabounce back po ang tunog. Mga, may mga wall dyan, magbabounce siya. Kapag po kayo may recording studio, ladies and gentlemen, hindi po ibig sabihin yan na yung mixing area po, pupunuin nyo yan guys ng, ano tawag ba dito? Ang <laughs> um, foam. Hindi po. Hindi mo nyo pupunuin ng foam kasi... It's, it will sound unnatural, ang pangit na pag ganyan. Dapat po yan, mayroon lang dyan nakalagay na certain amount of um, diffusers, okay, to spread out the, ano yan, the, the sound. And then po, um, you need to have a certain amount of absorber on a particular area na kung saan ang controllable po yung reflection ng tunog. Okay? Pero importante yung symmetrical po ang pagkakalagay ng inyong computer table or production table. And of course dito, sabi naman dyan, Okay? Sabi ko kanina, at least, okay? Sabi ko, at least one ruler. Okay? At least one ruler. Kasi, 
Di mana tu mai bitaran, nak kan kuarto nak tu kasadai. <laughs> For example lah kuarto ni yang room ni, yang paglagai naglagai kaya nang nang computer table, kalahati nalu buang kuarto mu. <laughs> Tapos sa likod buka mana, di ba? So at least one, yun na yung pinaka minimum one ruler. Pero yung prefer dito guys na nakalagay at least two feet yung speaker bago sa ding ding or sa wall. And then of course we have three to six feet po minimum na po yan so that the reflection of the sound Okay? Will be nice and decent. Yun lamang po, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much sa ating first discussion. Okay, Ma'am Rhea, maraming salamat. And ladies and gentlemen, yan. So, madami tayong natutunan na. Simple lang po ang tatandaan natin. It's correct measurement. Yun lamang po. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. Okay, so what's up, Jermok Heduk? Welcome back to our Bura Bura live stream. Okay, regarding po dito sa installation and setup on audio production. So, let's proceed po dito po sa cable patching, which is where one of the, ano yan, uh, one of the important um, subtopics po pagdating sa installation and setup. Kasi kung di kayo marunong kumabit ng cable, <laughs> di po kayo baka kapag recording. <laughs> okay, so with this, I think we can call on our next discussion po. We have Sir Darwin. Sir Dar, ikaw na po. Okay, so thank you, Sir Burn, for giving me the table. So, what's up again, guys? My name is Darwin. So, today, ang pag-iusapan natin ay tungkol sa cable patching. So, sa mga nag-gumagamit ng mga laptop, hindi din kayo masyado makakarelate dito. Pero sa mga desktop users, such as Mr. Bernard, ito ang pag-iusapan natin, which is patch cable patching. Okay, so next slide po, Sir. So, what is a cable patch? A patch cable is also known as patch lead or patch cord. The working of a patch cable is to connect two different devices to a wired network. Okay? Such devices include computers, other hardware, compo other hardware components, and non-networking devices like microphones. Most such wires are used in non-networking -net types of connections. Devices of different types, example given, is a switch connected to a computer or a switch connected to a router. So, karamihan sa atin, guys, gumagamit ng mga, sa mga gumagamit ng desktop, uh, desktop computers, gumagamit tayo ng cables para makakonect sa router to give us the um, internet that we needed. 
sa mga laptop users naman, they use wireless connections. Kaya karamihan sa nakikita natin, kahit saan pumunta ang mga laptop users, pwede sila mag-connect sa uh, mga routers. Okay, so next slide po, sir. The use of patch cables is to carry a variety of signals such as telephone, audio, video, and digital sig signals for network and non-network applications. Ito naman guys, ang uh, kinaibahan lang sa mga uh, desktop users or sa mga cable, uh, yung mga dumedepende sa cable, gumagamit pa tayo ng cables for telephone, sa audio, sa video. Kung i-mix mo siya sa kunwari, video call tayo tulad nito. Kung i-mix mo ang ang for ang lahat ng cables, gamit ka ng napakaraming cables for telephone and for the audio and also for the video. Okay? So next. Okay. So routers or patch cables are, are mounted hardware assemblies with ports to connect and manage in, um, incoming and outgoing cables in a LAN area network. So way back um, 2018, assessment kami sa computer system servicing lahat kami bumabase kami sa cables for um, transferring files and also monitoring our connections okay patch cables can be made from a variety of cable types we have there the coaxial UTP SPP and fiber patch cable types further pigtails refer to a cable assembly that has been terminated only at one and with exposed Bared wires. Okay, so first let's proceed to um, coaxial cables. Okay, next slide, po, sir. Okay, balik um, back back po. Maybe skip time. Okay, so coaxial cable. A coaxial cable is a cable used in transmission of video, communications, and audio. And this cable has high bandwidth and greater transmission transmission capacity. Okay, naman. Sa may mga cable naman na mga household, ito yung kadalasan na ginagamit natin na wire for better uh, transmission. And kung kunwari nakagamit ka ng uh, like SkyDirect, tignan mo ang wires niya. Ang wire niya ay need. Kakaiba ang um, setup niya which is... Um, next slide po tayo, sir. Okay. Kung titignan nyo guys, parang ibang iba sa lahat ng mga cable kasi kapag hinawakan mo yung copper wire na yan, yung parang bronze, di ba? Ang tigas niyan, even I, uh, I am uh, mm -hmm. what do you call this? Kahit ako, uh, ignorante ako dyan nung hinawakan ko talaga siya. Akala ko, normal, normal na wire siya. Pero it's different. This kind of wire was used in better transmission of cables, lalo na sa ating mga gumagamit ng mga yung plato-plato, di ba? Like sky direct, mm -hmm. uh, signals, and etc. Okay? Next slide po, sir. Okay. So, unshielded twisted pair. Okay. This is the common uh, wire that we use. Cables, UTP cables are widely used in the computer and telecommunications industry as Ethernet cables and telephone wires. In a UTP cable, conductor switch form a single circuit are twisted around each other in order to cancel out electromagnetic interference or EMI from external sources. UTP cable is a group if single conductors wrap around each other inside an insulated jacket and unshielded twisted pair cable is low cost network. Meaning to say, ito pong mga ganitong klaseng mga wire which is UTP cables, ito yung mumurahin lang. Kapag kunwari pumunta ka sa hardware, siguro ako dati nung nag-training ako, 1 meter is equals to 12 pesos. Mm -hmm. And sa training na magamit kami ng halos 10 metro hanggang um, above mm -hmm. if parang nag parang may mga problem sa pagpatch ng mm -hmm. cable. Okay, next slide po, sir. Okay, next slide. Okay, so what you see here guys is the an example of UTP cable. And hindi lang to basta-basta cable, guys. You can see here um uh, different kinds of colors which is blue, white, brown, white, orange, white, green, white, and yan lang. Ito, 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 ito yung pag-training namin. Isa lang maputol dyan, yari ka. <laughs> Opo, sir. Grabe. 
Ito yung tipong sa mga nagte-training sa CSS, may stress kayo kasi kung kunwari nagkamali lang kayo sa isang war diyan, uulit na naman kayo, puputulin na naman 'yan kasama ng RJ45 na maliit. Ito yung talagang pipikunin kayo pag hindi gumagana yung ano, uh-huh. yung connection. Sige, so explain okay. mo. Ito, okay. ito guys yung pinaka basic na ginagamit kapag kunwari may router ka, then you will connect it to your computer. Pwede din naman sa mga smart TV na may mga uh, LAN port. Okay? Ikaw, sir, nahirapan ganit sa pag-patch nun. <laughs> Oo! Oh, oh. Kasi ano yan, napakaliliit niyan. So, yung nakikita nyo kasi sa ano yan, sa UTP, yung malaki lang yun. Siyempre, brush out mo yun, kinakailangan mo yung tanggalin. Bago mga kantong nga, bata, minsan oh, pasmado man ako. Bago mga kantong kasimpleng pag... Para, bata kang, pag nalig mo na, di mo na, di mo na basta-basta matangkal. Putol na naman na kaya... Um, Kaya yung mga ano yan, yung mga mag-aaral po neto sa ano yan, sa telecommunication. Okay. So, I, we suggest no, na mag-train po sila sa TESDA, right? NC2, may NC2 training yes, neto. O, kasi, buka kang guys, ambog. Pag napangsala eh, kasayang na. Hindi mo mga dumabulnot sa desad. <laughs> okay. So, it's very important so, mga, po na... Mga nagbabalak, mga nagbabalak pala na mag-training ano, sa computer system servicing. You can visit um, IDS colleges. Open sila dyan. Okay. okay. So next, it, sir. Okay. Okay, next slide. Okay, so STP, which or shielded twisted pair. This um, cable has an additional braided mesh coating or metal foil that wrap, wraps around each set of insulated conductors. The metal casing intercepts the penetration of like, electromagnetic noise, and it also can eradicate a phenomenon called crosstalk. which is the unwanted effect of one circuit on another, another circuit. So, next slide, sir. Okay. So, anong nahalata nyo, guys, kung kunwari, tingnan nyo siya, anong mahalata nyo sa mga wires niya? Sa mga participants natin, anong mahalata nyo? Oh, sa yan. FPT. Twisted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, hindi nila ano masyadong mag yun eh. Okay, so, <laughs> this, um, this cable, of course, when one lining, And it picks up some of the signals traveling down to another line. Um, this effect can be experienced during telephone conversations when one can each hear each other in a conversation. So, next slide po, sir. So, a lot of you will be confused. Anong pinagkaiba ng UTP cable sa STP cable? Okay. Kung titignan nyo, na, nyo lang naman sa basic, feature, basic features ng UTP cable from an STP cable, Each um, cable dito sa parang nakikita nyo, kunwari, itong gray and lighter gray. Kung titingnan nyo sa, sa ano, shielded twisted pair na cable, ka- kada, ano niya, kada wire, parang may foil pa. Yung sinabi ko mm-hmm. nga sa um, past slide, may foil siya na protected na protected siya. Shielded Ito, guys, ang tawag napakahirap, doon. Opo, napakahirap niyang iset up kung yan ang gagamitin nyo. <laughs> Kasi imano-mano po talaga. <laughs> Minano-mano muna nga sa labas, mano-mano din sa loob. Ganun yung mangyayari sa kanya. Okay, next slide po, sir, for um, additional uh, comparisons. Okay, so, a lot of you guys here will not um, notice this one. Okay, so, for our um, basic, a UTP cable is a cable with wires that are twisted together, while an STP is a twisted pair cable enclosed in a foil. Yung sinabi ko na, kada twisted pair, Mayroon siyang protection ng foil. Tawan ko kung bakit ganito talaga yung nangyari. Pero, um, I guess it's for protection and for faster transmission. Mm-mm. Tama po ba, sir? Yes po. Tapos, avoid okay. electromagnetic interference kasi uh, kung mapapansin nyo, mayroon yung tinatawag na can- canceling eh. Canceling. Yan pala tinatawag namin. Para malinaw talaga yung tatransmit na signal. Kaya yan po ganyan. Kaya medyo matagal talaga ang paggawa niyan or let's say yung pag patch or pagkabit. Let's proceed, sir. Okay. So, pumunta tayo sa mga pinaka-basic na ano yan, pinaka-basic features or comparison kung mga basic lang na mga user. Sa cost naman, kung sa ano, gastusin, pagdating sa UTP cable, sinabi ko nga, napakamura niya. A UTP cable does not require much maintenance. Mm-hmm. While in an STP cable, moderately expensive po siya. I don't know the, what the reason behind this because gumamit lang ako ng UTP cable, hindi ko pa na-experience na STP. Mm-hmm. And sa data rates naman guys, 
as you can see, kung gusto mo nang mas mabilis, dito ka kay SPP because SPP provides high, higher data rates than LUTP cable. Okay? Baka sa mga ano eh, mga call center company mga ano, a call Opo. center la- like SPP doon. Baka SPP ang ginagamit mm-hmm. nila. Kasi nagtrabaho ako dati doon, ang bilis ng internet connection talaga mm-hmm. nila. You can never compare it to a um, a regular user uh-huh. na may UTP cable. Uh-huh. Okay, next okay. slide po. Okay, so for our next slide is a copper patch cable. Ether- Ethernet and patch cable use copper because of its tensile strength, ductility, thermal expansion, corrosion resistance, and pliability. Next, um, next slide po, sir. Okay, so Ethernet cables and, and patch cables can be the same thing. However, Patch cables are generally shorter cable cable assembly used to connect equipment in computer based or rack or to connect peripheral devices to the computer. Okay, next slide po, sir. <coughs> Yan. Okay, so in market. general term, patch cable is a cut type of internal cable which connects your PC to a router, hub, or switch. Such wire is used mostly for the home internet network or at the, the same time of traveling when you need to access the hotel internet through cable. Ito naman guys, ang pinaka-basic na uh, patch cable na makikita nyo, which is the Cat5. Kung kung wag bili kayo ng globe at home wifi, di ba? Parang may 3D siya na kulay yellow na patch cable. Mm-hmm. Yun yung tawag natin doon is a Cat5 cable. Sa so, mga nagbabalak na mag-undertake um, ng... CSS sa Tesla, CAT5 po ang ginagamit na cable or CAT5 ang ginagamit na type of uh, mm-hmm. patch cabling. Yeah. Cable patching, I mean. Okay? So, next slide po, sir. So, we have here um, a fiber optic cables. A fiber optic patch cord or jumper cable is a cable assembly with a fiber optic cable terminated at its end. The pre-terminated connectors allow it to be conveniently connected to an optical switch or uh, CATV or other telecommunications equipment. Next slide, sir, so that they can see the image. Yan. Okay, so it optical transmitter, receiver, and terminal box. These devices can use single mode or multi mode fiber patch cables, types of and a variety of fiber optic connectors. Siguro ito parang nakita ko na to sa ibang mga uh, mga offices. Yes, parang may nakikita ko na. Para ang liit ng mga wirings guys. Hindi natin siya um, kadalasan nahalata ah, kasi. Napakaliit niyan lang ya. Pero kung pupunta kayo sa mga um, offices like yung parang may mga telepono, tel- telepono I mean, parang ito siya. Kasi ang kada- um, most commonly used cables are the Cat5, yung kaninang sinabi ko. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so next slide po, sir. Okay, that's all guys. Thank you so much for listening and I hope le- you learn and <coughs> Basically, kapag mag-undertake kayo ng um, CSS, make sure that you always use UTP cable and the CAT5 method of um, cable patch. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Nakabalik na yung dalawa. Thank you very much, sir Darwin. Yan. So, well said, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, yung pinakita po ni sir kanina, yung mga typical pong ginagamit sa cable patching. Okay? Ang tanong, saan ba ito magagamit sa audio production? Actually po, yung mga meron pong Air Midas po na mga consoles or let's say mga audio mixers, diretso na po siya, a Cat5 cable, may, meron na nga Cat6 eh. Yung Cat5 cable po, yun talaga po yung ginagamit to transfer all the data coming from that particular console into your DEW or into your computer. Kasi, kung for example, multiple tracks, live recording, napakadami nung ano yan, nagre-record sa likod, hindi yan kaya ng normal lang na audio interface yung pinakita kanina. Kinakailangan po ninyo na talaga ng separate mixer or console so that doon po sa mixer, yung nagtatrabaho, inaayos nyo na, yung magdadala nun is Cat5 cable, diretso na po yan doon sa inyong computer. Ang problema kung may mali sa Cat5 cable ninyo, <laughs> putol sa na, sad sa, at, at ang sabi ko sana, sad sa na yan tabing wire na maputol sa lag, wala na yan, sira, sira na po ang transfer ng signal, magkakaroon nyo ng konting ano yan, disruption, Minor lang, pero putol-putol yan. So, kaya nga, ang, ang kagandahan talaga, it's better to use STP. Sa mga live professional recording equipments po, STP ang gamit. 
pero mahal po talaga kasi shielded siya po sa kamalang tagas niya talaga di sa sora kay kan cat pipe na uno ka UTP mare pa rin niyo medyo malakot-lakot pa ninyo so STP po talaga heavy duty siya so, nakakapot na kay kanto sir na ay naalala ko sir nung sa IDS kami nakakapot ako nakahawak ako ng STP ang tigas talaga niya shielded siyang maray kaya lang mal siya because of the material shoes Kasi parang ano, basta ang sakit sa kamay pag mm. separate mo na yung mga... Opo. Ano, Epon mo nga talaga ito ng mga sadayin ng mga plies para makuan mo siya. Kasi kung kamay lang talaga gamitin mo, medyo may harap ka. Yun lang po. Thank you very much, Sir Darwin Carillo. Okay? So mga kapatid, so nakita nyo po. So madami pong gamit. Hindi lang po basta-basta yan. So kinakailangan po natin pag-aralan. We will be right back. Okay, so what's up there ulit mga ka -eduk. This is your host, Sage Casenta, and I hope you are learning something here sa ating bura-bura session regarding post installation and setup in audio production. Okay? So thank you very much po sa ating uh, dalawang discussion po, si Ma'am Bea and si Sir Darwin. Okay? Thank you very much, sir. And let's proceed na po sa ating next discussion. We have Ma'am Norby. Ma'am Norby, are you ready na po? Okay. You may go on, Ma'am. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, I'm here to um, present my topic about microphone position. So, let's start. Okay, let's define, define first. What is microphone? Okay, a microphone is a device that captures audio by converting sound waves into electrical signal. So, di ba, sa microphone, um, when we speak, um, the sound waves created by our ano, voice ano, carry energy toward the microphone. Tapos oh. sa, di ba yung mga microphones, they have a small, um, a small light material in them na tinatawag natin diaphragm. Yes, exactly. So, okay, so the... linawi natin ito mga ka-edu. Ang Yung talagang mabahaling microphone, diaphragm microphone po, umaalog yan. Okay? Pinakita ko natin sa inyo last time. Pakita natin sa mga ka-eduk natin. Ito yung ginagamit ko. This is SM58, sure, dynamic microphone. So, kung mapapansin nyo po dito sa ano yan, likod ng ano yan, microphone, umaalog siya ng konti. Okay? Papakita natin sa mga viewers natin. Okay? So, ito po siya mga kapatid. So, pag po siya tinamaan ng ano yan, sound signal, medyo po dumidiin niya ng konti. Gumagalaw siya. Okay? Ayan. So, may spring dyan sa loob. Sa loob neto. Okay? Kaya maganda talaga yung ano yan. Tapos heavy duty siyang microphone. Kung gaano po yung presyo neto, hindi ko lang alam. Baka kapresyo ng cellphone niyo Hindi ko, <laughs> di ko lang alam ngayon sa market. Pero mahal po yung SM58 kasi ito yung ginagamit po sa standard. Pag tinanggal ko yung ano yan, Yung, yung takip, ganito talaga ang labas niyan. Hmm. Okay? Pero mas maganda pa rin pag merong, <laughs> meron takip dyan, oh, yung, yung head. Magandang tingnan. Okay? Let's proceed, ma'am. Okay na, ma'am? Um, there are three basic types of microphone. The dyna dynamic microphone, condenser microphone, and the ribbon microphone. So, tig-discuss naman to last, ano, la ng mga last reporter sa yung yes, microphone. Po. Kaya, ipapagawin lang yung mga iba't-ibang klase ng microphone. 
Okay. Okay. So, ito. ito po yung mga iba't ibang klase ng dynamic mi microphone. Condenser microphone and ribbon microphone. So, proceed na po tayo sa the microphone position. Okay. Microphone placement placement techniques. Regardless of the style of microphone you use or the type of instrument you record, you can use one of the following mic placement techniques to capture the sound you want. Okay, the, the first one we have is pat or close mic in. So, yung close mic in, it is the practice of placing the microphone physically near the source of the sound being recorded. Typically, no more than 12 inches in the distance way. So, dito, sa um, close mic, mic in, it means, um, yung microphone, ipoposition natin siya um, very near to the sound source hmm. in order to ano, capture more direct sound and minimize pickup of ambience and drum Yan. Ito yung, ito guys, yung sinasabi natin na Kung ayaw mong matap, ma, let's say, ma, matalo ng noise, yung sound source, ilapit mo sa source. For example, ang gamit mo is microphone. Pag mas malayo ka sa source niyan, mas madami mapipick up yan na noise. Kung mas malapit ka, mas maganda yung signal mo, mas malakas yung signal kaysa sa noise. Ganun po yun. Okay, let's proceed ma'am. Okay, the next one is distant micing. Um, when you use distant micing, you place mics about 3 or 4 feet away from the sound source. Distant micing enables you to capture some of the sound of the room along with the instrument. Yeah. Um, an example of um, distant micing techniques is the um, overhead drum. Yes mic. po, exactly. Ito naman po, ang purpose naman nito, makapture niya yung tunog ng isang instrumento sa room. Ibig sabihin, yung room acoustic Yan ang maka-capture niya. So, ginagamitan to ng condenser microphones kasi hindi dito pwede ang dynamic mic. Walang mapipick up ang dynamic mic dyan. Condenser lang po talaga ang pinaka-the best for this distant micing setup. Let's proceed, ma'am. Okay, the third one is ambient mic. Ambient micing is simply placing the mic far enough away from the sound source so you capture more of the room sound, the reverb and delay, than the sound of the actual instrument. You might place the mic a couple feet away from the source direction, or you might place the mic across the room. Sometimes it's even at such a distance that it's not even in the same room. So my example for you. Sa uh, ambient ano po, micing, um, it relies on the sound of the room to create a pleasing ambience. So, yes. if your room doesn't play, um you're better off using close micing. Okay. Uh, mga kapatid, linawin natin ang ambient micing. Okay? Sa so distant micing. Distant micing kasi may certain distance siya. So ambient micing naman, really um, capturing ang um, the, the room noise or let's say the room sound. Okay? Ang purpose na ito, to add real effect. Or let's say a little, hindi ka na magdalagay ng artificial effects galing sa ano yan, sa DAW mo. Ibig sabihin, pag nagmix ka, dapat, coming from the original sound source, pipick up nung mic, for example, nilagay mo yung ito, yung drum set, nasa likod mo yung ano yan, ambient mic, napipick up nyo yung buong room sound, tapos yung hataw nung ano yan, nung drummer doon sa drums, Ang kagandahan dito is totoong-totoo yung naririnig dito. Kaya may mga naririnig kayo guys, mga ka ng mga tunog, na tunog lata, tunog computer, kaysa sa original talagang tunog. Ang problema naman dito, makonsumo sa mic. Madaming mic na kailangan nyo dito. Okay? Tapos ang ambient micing po, hindi lang po yan simple condenser mic, mamahalin po dapat. Para talaga, real, reality-wise, at least from 20 hertz to 22,000 hertz or 20 20 tama 20,000 hertz ang pick up nung 
Mike, tatlong totoong totoo, real ang maririnig yung sound. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. Okay, the next one is stereo micing. So, yung stereo micing involves using two mics. So, pag gumagamit tayo ng dalawang mic, um, mm-hmm. stereo micing yung tawag doon. Uh, it mm-hmm. captures the stereo field of the instrument. A variety of stereo micing te- techniques exist and things can get pretty complicated when using two yes, mics. <laughs> you can also find stereo mics that on their own, do a good job of capturing the stereo field of instrument. So, may mga um, types ng okay. stereo mic. XY. The XY, also known as a coincident pair, is a popular method of stereo mic. This is yes, a great ma'am. for purpose, close, and far. So, ito Mm-mm. po yung example. Uh-uh. Next, ma'am. So, important ito. Rules of third, okay? Yan, ma'am, oh. Three to one. The three to one rules of distance. The rule states that the source to microphone distance of numerous microphones should be three times the distance between the sound source and the nearest microphone. So, hmm. for example, um, if the first mic is one foot from a source, the second mic should be placed closer than three feet from the source. Yan. Opo, importante yon. Bakit? Ladies and gentlemen, ang iniiwasan natin pag madaming microphone is face cancellation. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Doon pa lang sa si stereo micing, hirap na hirap na yung ibang mga producers natin. Why? If, if the, the mic is positioned at the wrong distance coming from one source, nagkakaroon po tayo ng face cancellation. Ibig sabihin, okay, yung, yung signal po, mayroon pong nakakancel or let's say na umihina yung tunog or minsan nga nawawala pa talaga tapos hindi niya ma-adjust kahit so, sobrang lakas na nung ano yan nung taas na nung fader hindi na talaga po lumalakas because cancel nga so meron kami tinatawag ladies and gentlemen sa audio production na always check face check face check face anong ibig sabihin nun tingnan mo yung positioning kung yung ba ay match sa wave, dapat magkapareho talaga. Yeah, di naman talaga exactly pareho. At, pero at least, yung galaw ng waveform nila, pareho. Dahil kung yan po yung isa medyo mali yung pagkakaposition mo, yung isa dyan, pabaliktad. So, magkokontrahan yung dalawa, magkakaroon po ng cancellation. So, in short, papangit ang tunog or hihina ang tunog or wala kang maru- maririnig na tunog. So, importante po yan. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. Okay, here are four of the most common instruments and how microphone placement affects your sound. First one is recording vocals. Um, the positioning of microphones for vocalists is 6 to 8 inches from the mic. Mm-hmm. So, um, when recording vocals, it's crucial to have the microphone in the right place. Siyempre, ipiposition po natin yung microphone mm-hmm. in front of the vocalist. Um, <laughs> Alam naman sa likod. <laughs> <laughs> Place the microphone around 6 inches from the singer or vocalist. If the singer is having trouble with staying that distant away, um, it's a good idea po na gumamit tayo ng pop filter. Ayan, Kasi tama yun. It can act po as a guide to help you maintain a consistent distance from the microphone. Okay, so tama yung sabi ni ma'am. Kung ang gamit mo ay condenser mic. Kung ang gamit mo is yung kaninang sabi ko yung ano yan, ang dynamic microphone. A dynamic microphone actually is not intendedly, no, to be used in recording studio. Ang dynamic mic kasi intended talaga siya for live performances. Pero kung gagamit ka ng, ng condenser mic, kinakailangan mo lang audio interface na may phantom power. So, ibig sabihin dagdag, ang live, ang live ano yan, performances, kung kayo mag mix sa live, Yung dynamic microphone po, hindi siya nangangailangan ng phantom power. Yun nga lang, close micing siya. Talagang dikit sa nguso. Pero, ladies and gentlemen, I want to clear this something. We have this what we call proximity effect. Ang proximity effect po, pag mas lumapit yung singer sa microphone, lalo pong napipick up yung lower frequency. Kanina, inorient ko si Darwin. Sabi ko, ibaba mo lang, Darwin, yung mic. Kasi pag mas malalong malapit, mas bilog yung tunog. Ang problema, kung ma-overlap yung ibang high frequency ng, ng lower frequency, Medyo ano yan, di, di na masy- kasi lalo pag magsasalita, dapat lumabas yung sibilans, yung tunog na, yung mga S, like doon, yung mga T. 
para mas maganda yung production ng tunog. Okay? So, yung sinabi kanini ni ma'am, much better yan kung condenser microphone. Okay? Ang gagamitin ninyo. Okay? So, let's proceed ma'am. So, the next most common instrument recorded in home studios is the acoustic guitar. So, with acoustic guitar, um, the usual approach is to position a small diaphragm condenser mic about a foot from the instrument pointing towards the 12th fret. And the uh, ano, other, other mic naman could also be pointed toward the bridge. Ayan. Uh, una pansin nyo last time, nung nag-record ako nung U, yung in-upload ko, yan po yung position, ang tawag dyan, sabi kanina yung may sweet spot din talaga eh. Every musical instrument has what we call sweet spot. Ibig sabihin, hahanapan mo siya ng pinakamagandang source para ma-pick up. Kasi kahit gano'ng kaganda ng pagkakatugtog ng, ng artist, kung mali yung miking mo, wala yung kwenta. <laughs> okay. Tapos sabi ng mixer, pati hindi ko maayos yung ano yan, yung tunog, ang pangit-pangit, mali yung miking. Well, aka importante kan mikings lalong-lalo na sa mga emerging producers, okay? So 'yon. Pero ang pinaka the best sa uh, gitara, guys, kung gamit mo lang isang microphone, hindi ka gagamit ng stereo pair. 'Yan nakita niyo dalawa diyan naka nakalagay. Ang pinaka the best diyan is ilagay mo doon malapit sa ito sa may harang ng gitara or malapit doon sa for example, ito yung bilog ng gitar, diyan sa gitna niyan. Pwede diyan doon. Hindi hindi naman doon sa laka bilog. Hindi naman doon malayo sa bilog. Doon lang po sa mayroong ano yan, sa fret bar. Mas maganda ang tunog niyan. Makukuha talaga niya yung, yung lagong tapos so tinis nung guitar. Okay, let's proceed ma'am. Okay, keep in mind, um, yung hindi natin dapat gawin kapag nagre-record ng acoustic guitar. Um, do not place the microphone directly <laughs> in the sound. Oo, oh, okay. yeah, sabi ko kanina eh. <laughs> Oh. Because placing a mic to the sound hole of an acoustic guitar gives a bassy or boomy sound. Yeah. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. The next one is recording a piano. Wow. One of the reasons for the difficulty in rec recording piano is due to the sound being produced by the whole body of the instrument. Sound waves are emerged from all over a piano and different parts of the instrument wooden body resonate at different frequencies. It makes the positioning of your microphones very important to get right. Yan. Upright piano yan. Two types of acoustic piano. The grand piano and upright piano. Okay. So, sa, yung microphone placement po sa piano, um, typically place 5 feet above the ground within a 3 foot perimeter mm. of the piano. Um, ultimately, it's up pa rin sa, ano, sa audio engineer to yes, po. implement the formal and formulate the best position. Nagbabari kasi yan, depende sa laki ng piano. Kasi meron tayong grand piano na talagang yung literal na malaki. Meron naman tayong mini, mini grand piano. Pero normalis dito sa Pilipinas, wala naman masyadong bumibili ng piano. Mo Ang mahal kasi neto, bumibili sila ng electronic piano or let's say what we call keyboard. Ayan, kasi mura lang. Tapos, kaya mong bit-bitin kahit saan. Bakang raw piano, bit-bita raw kan. Hindi <laughs> mo mga gamabutang sa kwan, sa tricycle. <laughs> Di ba? Okay? So let's proceed, ma'am. Okay, the last one is setting up drum microphones. Number one, kick. Place the microphone in front of the resonant kick drum head. So, nakikita niyo po sa picture yung uh -oh. mic. If there is a hole in the head, place the microphone inside for better mm -hmm. isolation. Removing the resonant head and placing the microphone closer to the beater head provides increased attack. Uh -oh. Tapos yung snare, ma'am. Ayan. Snare. Sa snare naman po, place the microphone 1 to 4 inches above the drum Ayan. near the room. Close miking, no? Close miking talaga pag drums, okay? Pag lalo sa mga ano yan. Sa snare tapos sa kick. And then sa toms po. Thumbs. 
Protoms naman po, place the microphone 1, 2, 4 in <coughs> inches of the... Ay, pareho. Ano? <laughs> Ayan o. Oh. To place the microphone at ano yan? Sa snare to. At ito naman, the same. 1 to 4 inches above the drum near the rim. Yan. Para mas maganda yung, yung ano yan, yung, yung production. Para makapture talaga nyo yung tinatawag nating resonance ng sound instrument. Okay? Ano pa ma'am? Okay, we have here sa overheads. Sa overhead naman po. Um, overhead microphones capture symbols and an overall stereo image of the drums. So, dito yeah. na natin i-up an XY coincident pair. Yes. So, place, uh, set up the microphone with the capsule close together but not touching. Experiment with angles between 90 and 120 degrees to capture the full width of the source. Mm. Oh, see? Tamang miking yun. Okay? So, this is the AB space pair naman. AB space pair. Paired pair recording can deliver a dramatic stereo effect because sound arrives at each microphone at a slightly different time. Yes, po. the listen timing mm -hmm. cues that localize sound. Uh -oh. Mga ano yan, mga parang may special effect na yan because of the ano yan, latency. Okay, let's proceed ma'am. Or the delayed sound pala to. Okay. Ito yung ano yan, no? Yung spaced pair. Okay. Oh. So, all in all, ma'am, sa tingin mo, ilang microphone ang kinakailangan sa drums? Bilangin mo nga. Isa sa kick, isa sa snare. Okay, kung ang thumbs mo isa lang, bali tatlo. So, isa sa floor thumb, apat. Dalawa sa overhead. Tapos, meron pa tayong tinatawag na space. So, bali ilan microphone ang kailangan? Diyan sa ano yan? One, two, three... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Tama? 8 microphones. Oh, imagine nyo, 8 microphones. Wow! At lahat dapat yan, magagandang klase ng microphone. Okay? So, are you done, ma'am? Yan. So, thank That's you very okay. much. Okay. So, napakalinaw naman yung pagkaka-explain ni ma'am regarding dito sa ano yan. Thank you very much po, ma'am Norby. Ayan. Ayos. So, nakita natin, ladies and gentlemen, na ang pag-mic po, walang problema. Ang tapat lang ninyong tandaan, position ng mic. Yung tamang position kasi sa konsepto po ng audio production, one mic is simple. Big sabihin, isa lang. Siyempre, isa lang kakanta. Pag dumadami yung mic, it makes more complex. Or let's say, the complexity is arising. Because pag dalawa ng microphone mo, nagkakaroon na po ng face issue. So, check face, check face, check face. Yung mga choir, uh, problema sa choir is Kung konti ang singer sa choir, napakahirap lagyan ng mic. For example, yung choir mo is lima, apat. Hindi yan pwedeng lagyan ng condenser microphone. Mas maganda dyan, tigi isa na lang na dynamic microphone. Hawak nila or nasa stand. Pero kung ang choir mo is about 30 person, 40, isang microphone nga lang dyan, okay na sa amin eh. Kasi malakas na silang dati, hindi na nalamin kailangan pang dagdagan yung microphone. Okay? So, yun lamang dito regarding sa positioning of the microphone. Thank you very much, Ma'am Norby. At huwag kayong aalis, meron pang susunod ng mga topic. We'll be right back.
Okay, so what's up there, mga kayo? I hope nandiyan pa kayo. Medyo madami ang aming ano yan, topic ngayong hapon. Okay, kasi gusto namin matapos to kasi brand out na naman sa Wednesday. <laughs> So, hindi kami makakapag-alaya live streaming sa Wednesday, what? Okay, so I think we should start now sa ating next discussion. Andiyan na po si Sir Vince. Sir Vince, it's your turn na po. So, ayan. Um, once again, good afternoon sa inyong lahat, sa mga nanonood at um, sa kung sino man ang missing sa ngayon. So, um, <laughs> I'm Vincent Bipitas, your next discussion. So, I, um, I will be discussing the DAW and plug-in installation. So it is the fourth topic in the lesson three installation and setup. So um, in this topic, next po, sir, um, we will be discussing the following terms. So what is DAW? So um, for an easy pronunciation, let us name it DO. So instead of DAW. So next is history of DO, advantage advantages of DO, DO software and functionality. Plugins, installation, and plugins. So let's start. So first is what is DO. Next poster. So um, DO is or digital audio workstation is an electronic device or application software used for recording, editing, and producing um, audio files. So um, there was a saying that. Um, Uh, music is life. So, uh, lahat naman tayo ay may mga paboritong music sa, at, sa na ating gustong pakinggan. So, um, knowing the fact that our um, favorite music are made and it um, undergoes a lot of um, process from composing, um, adding some sounds and rhythms, and until the recording or um, audio mixing. So, um, the digital work is, um, audio workstation is the um, the one who are responsible for um, audio um, mix, um, recording. So, ito po yung ginagamit natin kapag um, tayo ay um, mag-record or mag-edit ng um, audio. So, next, sir. So, um, as I've said a while ago, so it is a uh, Um, um, a meaning of draw. So, recording music, song, speech. So, papasin lang po. Next, sir. So, we go now to the history of do. So, um, how do um, being born? So, um, early attempts at digital audio workstation in the 1970s and 1980s faced limitations such as high price of storage and Um, bus needs slower pressing and this speeds of time. So, ang, ang do po ay nag-start. Kung ma, um, ma naalala po natin nung um, yung naabutan natin yung mga um, um, recording files ng ating mga lolo, yung nasa na, <laughs> naka um, one pa po siya, naka large console or yung mga oh. naka tape pa po siya, naka um, yung nung naalala ko pa nung bata pa ako nung um, ginagamit ay ginagawa namin yung laruan yung uh, may pinapaikot-ikot sa gitna yung yung tape kinukuha namin yung tape ginagawa namin um, parang tali sa saranggola yon so um, yun yung um, pero lakas balik at hindi niyo ram lang kamal pala ni kanto ng mga panahon <laughs> yes sir kamal po ni kanto ni kanto po pero nga na um, as um, sa modern modernization na na um, may nagkaroon na ng disc Hanggang yeah. sa naging USB at saka, yun na. So, next po tayo, sir. So, yan. In 1978, um, um, a commercial um, DO is being produced. So, um, so-called the sound um, stream. So, yun po. Yung audio tape recorders. Next. So, in, in, in 1980, sorry po sa... Um, what, sa sa font size hindi ko po mas hindi ko po na oh yeah dapat nakaliyon ko na <laughs> so, sorry po so yan po yung mga um, commercial um, do na na mayagpag noong 1980s yon yung po yung MS MSX Yamaha CXM so ang hindi po natin alam hindi ba lang pala pang motor ang Yamaha meron din pala pang um, um, audio editing so uh, uh, yeah okay. So, na, diretso na. Uh, next. So, sorry po talaga. So, so, 
Kenapa sama? <laughs> So yan yung, yung early 90s uh, yan na po medyo um, medyo um, nagiging modern na po yung daw natin naka kung napapansin niyo naka um, naka-install na po siya sa isang um, computer. So yes. Yan na po yung Apple Mac. So these are the advantages of using do. So first is the capability to handle longer sound files. So um kumbaga um Halimbawa, nag-record tayo sa isang studio. So, um, ang kadalasan kasi, di ba, minsan, halimbawa, nag, um, kung ikukumpara natin sa nag-record tayo sa cellphone, minsan, nakukurap yung cellphone yeah. natin. Tapos, siyempre, ma- mawawala yung um, record natin. Tapos, affected pa minsan yung um, record, hindi masyadong maganda. Um, unlike po, pag nasa studio tayo or nasa gumagamit po tayo ng um, do, so, ma- maalagaan po natin, ma- um, masisave, ma- papanantila ting safe yung file. So. Next po, sir. <laughs> so. <laughs> ang hat pala dito. Ayan na. <laughs> so, oh, next sige. is um, random access editing. So, as audio is recorded on the hard disk, any point within the program can be accessed at any time. So, ito po yung, napaka, yung pinakamagandang nagagawa ng do. So, halimbawa, Um, si um, Moy um, yung lima niyang um, favorite music gusto niyang pagsa- um, pagsama-samahin so sa isang isang song lang so um, ito yung mga nagagawa ng um, do application so, yeah. yung so, sinasabi ko nga na pwede nating um, i-mix yung lahat ng ating um, kumbaga ito na yung uso uh, yung uso na ngayon na minimix yung mga um, audio Tutu. files yeah. so next sorry sir pa sa Double trabaho. So, next is the non-destructive editing. Okay lang, so, sige. So, um, one of the advantages of do, um, kapag po po kasi tayo nag edit dito sa, aliwa dito lang sa um, CP natin, minsan hindi natin ma um, iwasan yung mga lags, yung mga ganon. Mm-hmm. So, minsan nasisira pa um, yung, um, yung mga, yung music. So, kung i-edit natin siya doon sa, um, um, sa do mismo, Um, ma kumbaga ma-edit talaga natin siya ng maganda yung ma matatansya natin yung tamang timpla so yun. okay let's proceed next is the DSP or the digital signal processing so it can be performed on a segment of an entire entire sound <coughs> file in either real time or non real time on mm. a in a non-destructive function. Okay. So, na, na as I said, a while ago po. Kung real-time, dito na po papasok yung, yung cable patching. Kasi sa real-time po, importante, sakto yan at um, sync po sa time. Okay? So, dito to papasok. Pero pag non-real-time, let's say you're mixing at home, pwede rin siya. Okay? Kahit dun lang sa do. Okay, let's proceed, sir. So, next... So, letter D is the softwares of do and Um, its major functionalities. So, para saan nga ba po talaga mar- ang DOS? Yung mga software ng DOS. So, DOS can simply buy, can simply refer to software itself. So, but um, traditionally, a computer-based DOS has four basic components. So, a computer, sound card, or other audio interface, audio editing software, and at least one user device adding modifying data. So, ito po yung um, sa paggawa um, natin ng DOS, Merong apat na components pong tinatawag. Siyempre yung PC natin or yung um, computer kung saan doon tayo mismo mag um, mag um, edit. edit and yung sound card. So yung sound card po yung nagsisibing um, yung um, kumbaga yung yung interface yun. Yan, yung yun nga po, yung and siyempre um, ay importante din po yung um, software natin. So mamaya maipapakita ko mga ang um, different softwares na um, yeah. kinatawag rin na plugins na yeah. ini-install po doon sa do para tayo ay makapag-edit. Sana free ah. Dapat free. <laughs> okay. So commercial yeah. po yon, May bayad po yon. Oh, may bayad. <laughs> okay. Proceed. So, um, so another one. Um, software of the functionality, computer-based do have extensive recording, editing, and 
playback type capabilities. So in and some also have video related feature. For example, they can be provide a practically limitless number of tracks to record on polyphony. polyphony. So um uh, sa do po um kumbaga mas larger yung um yung file niya kumbaga kaya mas um very um kuan po siya kumbaga mag-record tayo ng maraming um, audio mm-hmm. file so um, basta uh, kaya ng basta kaya ng memory uh, yes, po. Opo. so next po sir so at software system though are uh, those are um, designed with many user interface but generally they are based on the multi-track tape recorder metaphor making it metaphor making it a easier recording um, engineer and musicians already familiar with using tape recorders to um, become familiar with the new system, system. so yun nga po yung sinasabi natin so uh, so sorry po talaga hindi ko po napansin nagala ko po kasi malaki na po sa screen ko yan <laughs> pero di, di pa sige lang Naka, Maliit lang po pala. So, ah, yeah, so single pa track goes um, display only one only one mono or stereo form. So track at a uh, time. So multi-track those supports operation on the multi- multiple track at one. So um, ito po yung two basic types of those. So kung baga um, kung mag um, record po tayo ng single track ito po yung tinatawag na um stereo form. So kung kanina uh, na ko na po ito na kanina ni uh, Norby ay Norby po yun know, host ni uh, ni Moy. Okay, yung ladies sa, and gentlemen, ang tinutukoy dito ng tracking is that if that's mono, ang papasok na signal diyan isa lang. Isang pabang signal. Pag pag yes. stereo siya, dalawa yan. Dalawang signal po na magkaapak sa taas at sa baba. Okay, let's proceed. Sir. Yes. So next Basanit. <laughs> para sa day baka niyo. <laughs> so, ayan, ayan, ayan. commonly to feature some form mix automation using procedural line segment based on a curve-based interactive graphs. So, the line are and curves of the automation graph are joined by comprised adjustable points. So, ito na po yung um, mga line or graphs na makikita natin doon sa mismo monitor. So, kapag baga tayo nag record ng music, makikita natin mismo doon sa monitor na may parang yung sa hospital, yung mga yung frequency po yung tawag doon. Yun. Um, kung maga yung may high and low. Yun. Ah, so, ata. yun po yung... Um, ah, yung pa yun. That's the frequency words. spectrum. Ah, sige. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's proceed. Ayan, so, ito na yung hinihintay natin. Ayan. So, mga ano yan, baka may, baka may ibigay si Sir ng mga free plugins. So, ito po yung mga softwares <laughs> na... Um, Okay, sponsored. De, nang in-advertise ko po 'yan. So, may usold ko ako. <laughs> so, um there are countless um, software plugins for the software. Each one coming with its own unique function. Um, functionality thus expanding the overall variety of sounds and manipulation of that are um, possible. So, wag ko na pong basahin. Bu- buksan mo na kan ilaw yan sa so, inyo room na. <laughs> website. Hindi <laughs> na kayo ora na kayo di sama, sir. Oh, okay, kaya nga, di ba? Bukas na yung ilaw. <laughs> Yan! Ikin mo na sa nakulun. Okay, let's proceed. So, um, ayun nga po, yung plugin. So, as I've said a while ago, ito po yung mga um, softwares or application na i-install doon mismo sa ating um, PCs or um, computers para po sa ating um, audio mixing or audio recording. So, ito po yung mga notable commercial dos so may ang um, hindi po siya libre may bayad po yung mga ang um, <laughs> oh, oh. um, license okay yung license okay so hindi naman siya nag-advertise ako no Vince so yung Scarlet actually binili ko siya with free um Pro Tools <laughs> and <laughs> Ableton Live yun nang rara-arok si <laughs> yun nang rara-arok okay so kung bibili kayo ng ano yan Scarlet 2i2 meron po siyang free bundle po doon with certain plugins okay like EQ and compressors and also meron po siyang available na Ableton Live Studio and Pro Tools Basic okay so let's proceed sir kaya pa? <laughs> yes sir okay so so it is the Ayun na, importante so, na to. So, ito na ito last um, topic, the installation of 
plug in. So, ito po, yung nakuha ko pong sa internet, siguro libre po siya, yung oh, um, Audacity. Ableton. So, um, ito po yung software, pahanap na lang po Ableton. So, install your favorite audio software on your computer. You can use anything from a full site. Full suit like Ableton. Live to freeware such as Audacity or BSD host. So, freeware ka sir. Tabi. Okay. This demonstration um, will use apo. ang Ableton. Meron live. tayo so, guys, yeah, meron tayong mabibiling naka full suite na. Okay? Meron din tayong mabibiling demo. Big sabihin, every time mag subscribe ka, May mga ganun, okay? Kasi nagbabago-bago yung software. Pero mas maganda kung makuha mo yung full suite. Okay, let's proceed, sir. So, next. Step 2 is locate your BST plugin directories. Some software has this built in the to the program file. In which case, you may skip this step and proceed to the next one. Update on live requires you to do this manually like so so okay, proceed talaga. so next is ayun po go so, to bubasa. option menu menu and select preferences under preferences select the file folder so parang nag install din po tayo ng um, isang ano yung ano dito no? uh, so <laughs> arin yung adobe flash niya <laughs> Mga so- software. Yeah. <laughs> Nag- Nag-istoryaan sa <laughs> Kasi ka mo sa daro. Sige, diretso. <laughs> so, yun. <laughs> okay, let's proceed. Next Ayan. is... Um... Wait, sir. Sige. So, next one is confirm that the uh, um, live... Okay, so basahin ko na lang kay sir. So um, guys, pag sinabi nating BST, this is what we call virtual instrument. Okay? Sibig sabihin, yung instrumento siya na na-digitize na. Okay? So computer na po yung nagde-decode niya para siya ito, monog. At yung DAW natin. Okay, or yung DO. Let's proceed, sir. So Ayan. next, yung number na po ito, sir. F na, number 3. So number 3, select your BST plugin and download it. Most Yan. BST plug- plugins come in a form of zip file. Siyempre. Bakit nag-zip file tayo? Para compress. Para i-download mo, maliit lang. Pero pag dinocompress mo siya, mas malaki. Kaya nga guys, minsan, lalo na kung meron tayong third-party library, ire-require talaga nyo yung computer ninyo with a large storage. Kasi yung mga ang third-party na ngayon na nabibili sa internet, ay ito yung mga plugins na... Okay, kumakain ng memory, lalong-lalo yung mga BST nating mga um, it sounds actually the real instrument. Hindi na siya tunog computer, hindi na siya tunog lata. Okay, like yung mga um, sound natin na kukuha sa third party na um, reactor or doon sa third party na contact player. Yan. So let's proceed. So, next. So, <laughs> Unzip. Eh, dahil naka-zip file siya, so kailangan natin siya Extract. So, yeah. extract the plugin to its own folder in your plugin directory. Ginagituro kita yung dingwan, ha? Pang high school. Extract the file. Yeah, extract the file. Hindi <laughs> na pati graro-aro. So, next. Kamang <laughs> kaya, sir. Kuan, sir. Printe. <laughs> okay. Print yung may ilaw. Okay. So, number six. Delete the zip file or keep a backup in a different oh, okay. Like. Bakit importante mag-keep ng backup? Para sir, kapag na, alibaw, na-delete or na-corrupt yung file, at yeah. least na backup ka. Kumbaga, oh. Di ka magsugod sir sa laban kang nakabackup. Yan. <laughs> Kasi pagdating ng oras, pag nagkaroon ng, little, uh, let's say, a little corruption yeah, yeah. doon sa file, madali mong babalikan yung uh, decompress or let's say yung zip file. Okay? And last, so last but not the least is siempre open the open your audio software and confirm that the plugin is functional. So yeah. function So if, if if you install the plugin while the software was open, you may need you hmm. need to restart your. Um, Tama. Lalo na sa Windows, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, ito po yung mga plugins po natin na actually free for all. Pwede siya sa Mac, pwede siya sa PC. But sa Macintosh talaga, Logitech talaga, Logi Pro talaga doon eh. 
Okay? But anyway, thank you very much, sir. Meron pa pong susunod? Ayan. Let's party. <laughs> Alright. So, thank you very much, Sir Vince. So, ladies and gentlemen, ayan po. Dahil pinagpapawisan po yung dalawa dyan. Oo. Oy, anong, anong apartel yung pinasukan nyo? <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much, sir. So, yun po yung tamang pag-install po at pagkaalam po natin regarding si DAW or DO, which is the Digital Audio Workstation. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Huwag kayong alis. We'll be right back. Okay, so what's up there mga kaheduk? Welcome back again sa ating live streaming. Okay, bura-bura live stream. Okay, so this afternoon. Okay, let's proceed now po sa ating discussion regarding the installation and setup of our devices in audio production. So, let's welcome our next discussant. Okay, we have Ma'am Krizel. Okay? Ma'am... Di ba nagalaw yung file mo? Ma'am Krizel... Rogelio, ma'am? May isang file yan, ma'am. I uh -oh. sure. Okay, so open ko na lang mamaya. Okay? Saan ba yung nakalagay? Good evening, everyone. Sample. So, good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Sada Rogelio. And today, I'm going to discuss about the acoustic treatment. So, let's go to the objectives. Okay, ma'am, let's proceed. So, the objectives. At the end of this lesson, the student will be able to know the importance of acoustic treatment in your room or studio. Second, identify the materials needed in adding acoustic treatment to your studio. And last, learn how acoustic treatment works in order to improve the sound of your studio. Makes recording and mixing easier. Okay, let's proceed. Alright, first I'd like to address the problem of how to get a yeah. better sounding room. Yeah. So in previous discussion, na tackle dun natin yung installation and setup. Um, na tackle dun natin yung computer and monitor setup, microphone position, cable patching, and plugin installation. Pero some of um audio producers or yung mga tinatawag na Bedroom producers um, severely misunderstand yung impact mm -hmm. ng room acoustics. Yes. So, ina-assure na nila porket meron silang mamahaling condenser mic or meron silang mm -hmm. um, studio monitor setup and well-arranged cable, ibang-bibids na agad to into fantastic sound mm -hmm. and great studio. However, the truth is acoustic treatment uh, makes your environment sound more neutral and mas mimit mo yung qualities for recording and mixing. So, yun yung magandang term doon, neutral. Yung hindi naman super yeah. dull, hindi naman super reverby. Okay? So, let's proceed, ma'am. Paano yun? Eto na. So, on the discussion ni Mr. Pitas, um, natakal din yung mga plugs, plug-ins. Wherein, under nito yung reverb plug-ins. So, yung pl reverb plug-ins, um, capable to simulate any type of reverb. Diba sa isang room, um, pagkulog, masyadong may reverb. Diba? Ang dami. Hmm. So, pero this reverb plugs plug-ins only going to work when na-remove na yung natural reverb. Yung sinasabi ko ma'am um, sa natural reverb ng isang room. Yes. So, next. All we need is acoustic treatment. So, before before getting started with acoustic treatment, tas magkanda <laughs> magkaroon muna tayo ng background about sa um, how sound travels in a room. So, nakikita nyo dun sa illustration na yung sound source. Na yung sound source na, once nag-create na siya ng sound, lahat ng sound na is magta-travel in all directions. Nakikita niyo yung mga arrow, di ba? Yes. So, 
Um, tapos yung remaining sound energy collides with the surface of the wall. Parang magbabounce-bounce lang siya. And then pwede siyang bumalik sa microphone. Mm-hmm. And also yung direct sound is directly siyang mapupunta sa mic. So, kaya kinakailangan natin ng acoustic treatment kasi... Um, sabi nga ni Sir, pangit yung quality ng, um, ng mara-record natin if ganito yung room. Nagbabounce-bounce lang yung mga mm. um, sounds. Okay, let's proceed. Well said. So, next. Next is, um, what is acoustic treatment? So, when we say acoustic treatment, it is the process of improving the acoustic properties of a room for recording or mixing music. Um, it is done by mounting absorption or diffusion devices in areas where problematic reflections occur. So, natap- nasabi dito yung, yung absorption and diffusion. So, when we say absorption, Iniintay mo pala. Um, <laughs> Sorry. It is a method wherein prevent unwanted frequencies from reflecting back into the recording or yeah. mixing environment. Tama. So, um, ito, ito yung sinasabi na yung um, yung mga unwanted noise na maririnig kapag wala kang um, absorbers. Correct. So, when we say absorbers, ito yung nag absorb ng sound para hindi ma-reach ng mic yung mga hmm. nagbabounce na sound. Yes. How about the diffuser? So, is, uh, so yeah. diffusion, it is other approach to acoustic treatment diffusion. Works by scattering problematic mm. reflections Yan. in different directions. Mm-mm. This reduces their negative effects. So when we say diffusion, um, yung diffuser, um, nililid lang niya yung, um, yung sounds into different, um, into different side. Parang hindi, mm. hindi talaga siya Um, tinatanggal. More in, yes po. Para maging mas lively pa rin yung room and also may natural reverb pa rin. Yes po. Ang mm-hmm. nangyayari kasi dito, if you're going to treat the the room, we need actually two, di ba? We have diffuser and absorbers. And yan po, ina-align niya natin. Saan mo gusto mag-scatter yung tunog? Kung saan yung papunta, doon mo ilagay yung absorbers natin para immediately po makain niya yung ibang tunog mm-hmm. and avoid so much reverberation. Okay, let's proceed ma'am. So, acoustic and acoustic absorber and diffuser. They are different but similar in ways because they are used for acoustic treatment. However, different in their functions and property. So, let's Ito yung acoustic um, absorber and acoustic diffuser comparison chart. So, yung properties ng sound absorber is for absorption and isolation of sound. While the sound diffuser, it is the reflection and dispersion of sound. Yes. And the the materials of sound absorbers are made from various materials such as wool, fab- fabric, cloth, foam, and rubber. While the sound diffuser, it is made from wood, polyurethane, covered in a hard coating. And then the application used for sound absorber, it is used for acoustic sound purposes and also sa sound diffuser. While yung sound absorber is based on converting sound energy, while sound diffuser is based on mathematical principles or sa geometry. Next slide, sir. Okay na, size? So, in size, so sabi nga ni sir, nakadepende yung gagamitin mong um, acoustic panel sa wall and also sa mga Um, like sa windows, Mm-mm. sa sound absorbers, and also sa sound diffuser, uh, may requirement siya, approximately 1 meter squared when average. Yes, pwede natin magamit yung DIY capability sa sound absorbers and also sa sound diffusers. And, yes, yung sound absorbers is, can it be used on its own? And also yung sound diffuser then. While, And then next is, can it be paired with its opposite? Yes. Sabi nga ni Sir, hindi lang dapat yung absorber yung ginagamit sa isang room. Also, need the ng diffuser mm-hmm. sa room. Kasi nga, nag-work together sila para mas ang, ma- ang mas pangit talaga, yung ano. Ang pangit talaga ng room na puro absorber. Para kang pumasok, tapos, ano ka, di? Walang natural reverb. So, hindi siya, di siya normal sa akin. Nakakatakot. <laughs> okay, let's proceed, ma'am. 
So, the next chart is the last. Does it work well for reflecting sound? No. no. Well, the the sound diffuser, yes. Kasi nga, nire-reflect niya pa rin, but then, in different direction na. Mm. Does it work well for absorbing sound? Yes, yes. kasi nga, sound absorber. And the sound diffuso, diffuser no. is no. Yes. Does it work well for isolating sound? Yes. yes. Well, the sound diffuser Hindi. is no. Papakalate niya eh. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's proceed, ma'am. Ayan na. So, here's the different types of sound absorbers can you get. Ah, uh, wait. May mga arong um, na mali, na, mali ng mga um, sound producer is gumagamit sila ng eggshell. We're in, yes. Um, <laughs> sabi na, ano ka na sabi na ako natin? Salag-salag ko no. <laughs> Salag-salag. Yes, same sila ng shape ng, <laughs> ano, ng acoustic foam. But then, iba pa rin yung work ng acoustic foam kaysa sa ay, egg tray pala, sorry. Mm. Yung egg tray. <laughs> So, <laughs> Sabi na ako po na last time, salag, salag po no. <laughs> okay, egg trace po yun <laughs> ha, egg trace. Okay, yung DIY. Yun yung mali. Oh, pero Apo. based ano yan, sa calculation ng ano yan, ng mga researchers, ang na-absorb lang po ng ano yan is karamihan po coming from the um, low, mid, and higher frequency. Pero yung low frequency po talaga, hindi po talaga kaya siyang i-absorb ng salag, salag. <laughs> yung, sorry, yung egg tray. Okay, let's proceed ma'am. So, ito yung ano, three types of absorbers, which is the porous sound absorbers, membrane sound absorbers, and the last one is resonance sound absorbers. So, when we say porous sound absorbers, these abs absorbers are very effective at absorbing sound. They effectively convert sound energy into heat so that only a tiny amount of sound yes. is reflected. So, yung itong absorber na to is really plays an important role sa absorption ng mm -mm. ng sound because um makapal sila. Opo. And also um ito din yung mga common na ginagamit sa mga studio because it allow to um airflow into clear structure na kung saan na, yun nga na-convert yung energy into heat. Okay. So, linawin natin. Nakita niyo yung parang triangular position na ano yan, triangular form ng for sound absorbers. Actually, yung ginagamit sa kanto, okay, that's for bass, yes. ano yan, bass trap, para hindi masyadong kumalat yung low frequency. Sa mga kanto yan, ang ano yan, ng wall. Kasi mas malakas ang reflection dyan eh. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. <clears throat> so, here's the example of for sound absorbers. Pwede siyang yung acoustic curtains. Yan. Yung, um, what do you call this? Ito yung mga acoustic foams. Mm-mm. And next one is yun, acoustic carpets, yeah. acoustic, um, sa wall to, um, acoustic, please, ay, please ba yun? Mm -hmm. And then yung, yung, um, um, also this, sa wall din to, sa last picture. Karamihan kayo talaga actually makakapansin yan, kaso lang hindi nyo talaga bira itong mapansin sa, sa sinihan, ay madaming ganyan. Oo. Ang problema nga, madilim. <laughs> Hindi nyo papansin. Although, naka, nakabalot na kasi yan sa ano yan eh. Pag nag, nagtitreat kasi ng room, lalo na kung kinakailangan masyadong lagyan ng ano yan, ng absorbers, okay, uh, double ang layer pa niyan eh. Okay? Nakalagay pa yan, nakaseparate pa yan sa isang wall. Saka mo lang yan i-tatapal. Okay, let's proceed, ma'am. So, sa membrane sound absorber, a membrane absorber is a flat box, usually between 100 to 200 millimeter deep. Membrane absorbers, also known as a panel and dia diaphragmatic absorbers, utilize the resonant properties of a membrane to absorb sound over a narrow frequency mm -hmm. range. Yeah. So when okay. we say membrane, um, ito yung inabsorb, sabi ni sir, inabsorb niya yung low frequency or yung base. Yeah, no? Right, sir? Yeah, no. Oh. Yes. Kakainin niya dyan. Tapos, ang sikreto niya, makita niya parang may luwang, dyan kakainin yung, yung reflection sa kamawawala. Nakoconvert siya into heat. Okay? Let's proceed, ma'am. So, next is the resonance sound absorbers. When we say resonance absorbers, it is consists of a mechanical or acoustic oscillation system, such as membrane absorbers, where there is a solid plate with a tight air space behind 
absorption reaches its maximum at the resonance frequency. So, um, ito yung mga resonance um, absorbers, meron silang holes. So, dito, um, pumapasok yung sound to minimize yes. and also mawala din. Mm -mm. Kakainin yan. Kakainin yan. Tapos convert sa heat. Kaya, ladies and gentlemen, kung mapapansin ninyo, pagpupunta kayo sa isang studio, uh, unang pasok ninyo, mainit, Kaya kinakailangan i-turn on yung, air yung aircon, pero yung aircon dapat din yung split type para hindi masyadong maingay. Let's proceed, ma'am. So, next is, what different types of sound diffuser can you get? Yeah, diretso na to. So, ito yung maximum line sequence diffusers, quadratic residue diffusers, primitive roof diffusers, and the next, next, sir, is the optimized diffusers, Plus is hemispherical diffusers. So when we say maximum lens sequence diffusers, this type of diffusers I manufactured with strips or materials that have two different depth to them. Like yung sa picture na pinakita ko kanina, hindi sila hindi pantay yung mm. lalim nila. And also to obtain the maximum scattering effect of sound, the width of the strip is smaller than or equal to half the wavelength of the frequency. And then next is the quadratic residue diffusers. So these diffusers have a specific design in that they are able to disperse or diffuse sound into two directions. Unlike an um, yung MLS diffuser. In terms of their looks, they are very si similar to MLS diffusers, except that the material range strips are that create um he like pattern. So, yung sa quadratic residue diffusers naman is, yung, yung look nila is paumbong yung, yung mm. parang hook. Yun. And also, naiba lang sila sa sizes ng mga depth. Yes. And then, next one is primitive roof diffusers. When we say primitive roof diffusers are based on modular mathematics. In more detail, um, they are based on a number theoretic sequence which is based on primitive roots. So um yung ability naman nito ng diffuser nito is um same lang din sa um nasabi kong diffuser. And the next one is optimized diffusers. With aid of numerical optimization, diffusers with a small number of cells are per period are able to increase the number of theoretical design. This means that they are able to have variations in terms of their looks. So, yung optimized diffusers naman, um, as you can see, same siya sa um, same siya sa quadratic residue na um, pero, yun nga na pinagkaiba is curved siya. Mm, tama. Okay? Tama, sir. Yep. While the hemispherical diffusers, um, they are created to this first sound in a hemispherical pattern. They tend to create a big sound in a small room and help control the direction of dispersion in rooms that really need it, such as studios and mixing rooms. So, ito yung um, commonly na nakikita nyo sa mga um, recording studio. Now, akala nyo ano lang siya, um, design lang sa wall. Yun pala is um, diffuser siya. Okay. So, next is... Where to place? Um, so, saan natin ipi-place yung um um yung diffusers and absorbers uh, and diffusers. So, kanina pinakita ko sa inyo itong illustration na to and also I I make um another illustration kung saan natin um ilalagay. 'Di ba? Sabi ni Sir kanina yung may mirror, sinabi niya yon. Mm. Um ito yung sound source yung may S na blue, rain Para mahanap mo yung ano, um, para mahanap natin yung first reflection points is pwede tayong gumamit ng mirror. Mm -hmm. I-slide lang natin sila sa wall and once, and monitor natin kung makikita ba yung speaker tweeter. Right, sir? Yes po. And kapag visible na siya, i-mark natin yung wall na yun. Yes. And also, ilagay natin yung Ano, ay, wait lang. Itatanong ko is, Don't ano ba yung dapat mark. ilagay? <laughs> yes. Ano ba yung dapat ilagay doon? Absorber or diffuser? Yes, hindi naman mali na maglagay ng absorber, but some of, according to John 
card um according to John dapat yan diffuser is, pangit um, kasi sige ma'am sabihin mo um diffuser kasi nga ito yung first reflection na yes. um points ibig sabihin um um magbabounce lang siya sa different um direction mm. so gagamitin natin yung diffuser para magbounce siya sa different direction also ma-reach niya pa rin yung mic Kasi yung audio nyo, yung sound na yun is very important din sa recording. Mm-hmm. Kasi kung absorber, um, um, ma-absorb nyo yung sound, yung first reflection. And then, the next is... And the next is yung um, sa wall. So, sinasabi dito na yung wall is, ay yung corner, dyan mag-create ng... Um, napakaraming bounces Siyempre Alam, Yung distansya sound. niya maliit eh oh. yes. Ganito yung kanto Kaya, Diyan, yung kakanto. Kada kanto Kailangan natin lagyan ng um, absorber. absorber Absorber na yung ilalagay dyan okay. Kada kanto Four sides yun And tig dalawa sila ah, okay. Bali eight okay. And also O nga pala um, Maglalagay din tayo ng diffuser Sa front and back Yan. Ng room Studio oh, po Kasi, uh, po, para nga, ayun nga, mag, uh, mag-bounce man sila is sa different direction. Mm-hmm. Hindi diretso dun sa And source. also, ito lang yung basic na um, pinakita ko sa inyo. Kasi yung yes, iba po. is meron na sa ceiling. And yes, po. If, depende naman kasi sa room yun if need nyo ba ng carpet or ng mm-hmm. blanket or curtains. Mm-hmm. Yun po. Okay. So, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Well said. Ayo, so ladies and gentlemen, yung po yung pagkaka-explain ni ma'am. Okay, very detailed po. Okay? So, wala na ako doon masyadong ibibigay pa sa inyo. Okay? Yun nga lang. Meron po palagi si Sir Tip. Importanting tip sa mga ka-edu. Lalo na sa emerging producer. Kung gagamit kayo ng diffuser, ang pinaka the best is libro. Ito yung DIY, DIY natin. Books. May bookshelf kayo. Nakita nyo yung ano yan kanina. Pinakita na diffuser. Pag ay adjust nyo lang yung mga libro nyo na nakalagay sa bookshelf o iatras mo yung isa iabante mo yung isa yun po ang ginagamit ko na dito sa gilid meron dyan and then po pwede nyo gamitin naman as absorber is curtain kasi meron na kayo sa bahay nyo hindi nyo bibili pa ng mga DIY kung ano ano okay so yun lang po yun lang po ang pwede natin ikabigay sa inyo na for free na meron na kayo sa bahay nyo thank you very much ma'am Rahelia okay for that ano yan Uh, very well said discussion. Okay? Thank you very much, ma'am. At meron po pa tayong isang discussion. So, wag kayong at. We'll be right back. Okay, so what's up, Sir Mark? Head of the stage, Jika Sentai, and welcome back to our Bura Buras live stream. Okay, so ngayon, patapos na ating discussion at ito yung pinaka-importante rin dito. Okay, so we have here in the installation and setup is kung paano po magsisimula mag-record. Pero actually, it's part of the installation setup, not yet the, the final ano yan, ang um, platform which is mixing, okay? Pero importante dito kasi napag-aralan na natin yung kung paano maglagay ng microphone. So ituturo ngayon na ating next discussion kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng pre, on, and post recording. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, okay, nasaan sila? Nagulat ako, baka nawala bigla. Ayan na po. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, okay, bibigay ko na ang, ang discussion. Okay, sir? Sir Christian Perillo, sir? Okay, it's your sir. turn na po. So, um, before I start my discussion, I'm Christian Jan Perillo from Bitelet 3 ICT. So, uh, my discussion is all about pre, on, and post recording. So, yung mga diniscuss ng mga um, discussions a while ago, yung before before this discussion, is all about this recording. So, yung mga gamit na diniscuss nila doon, yung yung mga um, components and others is all about this this topic recording first what is recording 
Recording is a process of capturing and storing sound information. Sound energy are converted into electrical energy using transducers. Ano nga ba itong mga um, tran- transducers na ito? So, next po, sir. Transducers are electronic component capable of turning a form of energy to ito another. Yan. Ang pinaka um, common na example po nito is yung microphone natin. Yung mga microphones po na ginagamit natin. Why? Because from from sound energy um, tinuturn niya yung energy yun into electrical energy na yeah. maruid na ng ating mga um, components. And yes. ang kabaliktara naman po nun is, is yung mga ano natin, yung mga playback devices or yung mga speakers. Yes. Kabaliktaran po nun because ang speakers naman is from electrical energy, linilipat naman niya itong energy na to into sound energy na pinuproduce ng speakers. Exactly. So, Let's proceed. Next slide, sir. In pre-recording. In pre-recording, ito pa lang yung, ano, yung preparation stage ng mga ano, components and materials needed and setting up the some tracks to follow. So, in preparing this um, materials needed, needed, if we're going to look back before ng mga ano, mga early 30s, mga ganyan, yung the way they record ang um, audio, yung mga sound engineers dati, is napakasimple lang. And yung mga materials na ginagamit nila is ano lang, napakasimple. Mm-hmm. And mga microphones lang and just like uh, Vincent said, said a while ago, yung mga ano, yung mga sinaunang yung mga ano, <laughs> tape recorders pa. Sa so, mga lolo mga, niya daw yun eh. <laughs> mga pinaglalaroan niya. <laughs> so, but if we're going to compare it today na mas advanced na yung way ng pag-record natin, mas marami na tayong pino, um, mas marami na tayong pinaprepare. Sabi nga, yung mga more sophisticated ano pa, hmm. mga technologies. Oh, And okay. yung, isa, yung isang ano, is setting up a track to follow. Ito naman is for the music. Yung, yung beat na ano, yung ano yung metronome for example mm. yung ganun yung sinusundan nung yes no ano next po okay <clears throat> next is multi tracking ito naman po yung sinabi ko nga kanina is yung one of the advancements in audio production is yung multi tracking or or also known as recording multiple sound sources individually at the, at the same, same time. time. Yeah. Ano nga ba itong multi-tracking na to? Let me uh, first give you a short history about multi-tracking. Multi-tracking was developed in late 1940s by an US company named Amplex. Mm-hmm. And through the help of ano, um, guitarist na si ano, Isay. Si Les Paul. Si Les Paul. Ah. Guitarist siya. Siya po yung nag-experiment ng about sa multi-tracking. Mm-hmm. Multi-tracking is ano, kung ano, kung i-ano natin siya is mag-record tayo ng ano, individual tracks na in, it enable us, us to record instruments ang um, parang ano na, nakahiwalay na siya sa mm. voice yeah. ng singer. E record mo yung drums, yes. yung bass, Mm-mm. yung yung lead, yung rhythm, ay, yung piano, gano'n. Mm-hmm. So, they have individual tracks na. And Tama. it makes easier for our audio engineers to to navigate or customize our tracks. Yeah. Well said. Ayos. Ito na po yung advantages ng multi-track recording. Kagaya nga po nang sinabi ko na first is it records instruments individually. And yun, yun na nga, yung easier editing. 
ang ang isa pang kagandahan po dito sa ano multi track recording is pwede na tayong gumawa ng isang ano one man band mm. yung, yung tinatawag one man band kasi ang um, yung the way multi track recording works is pwede kang ano mag-record ng ng mga tracks in different times yes. for example mag-isa ka lang kayang-kaya mo na bumuo ng isang music na um, na dati ay isang band lang yung mm. pwedeng makagawa. So, Tama. Next. And next is on recording. Um, based on um, www.careermusic.com ano, yung nakuha ko. This is when you put mic to voice, cables in guitar, and virtual instruments into the song. So, Ang recording is one of the most important part ng ano parts ng ng audio production because if it relate natin siya sa context ng ano ng agriculture this recording is parang ano na siya harvesting ha- harvesting stage na siya dito mo na i i capture yung mga rehearsal ninyo and yung mga prepare ninyong equipments um, all basta um, aside from ano from from editing the ano mm-hmm. next to sir and for ano post recording na ito na yung final touches from parang ano na siya in transition to from recording to ano na siya to mixing, mixing yeah. or and editing our audio from yeah. sa stage ng ano audio production parang malapit na tayo sa ano sa ma- malapit na tayo makaproduce ng ng isang music pag pagkatapos natin mag ano mag ang um, recording and ano na yung last process na last final touches na. and ang um, i hope you guys learned something about my discussion so that's all thank you all right so thank you very much sir yan so napakalinaw no pinasimplehan sana ni sir <laughs> okay so regarding po dito sa diniskas niya po is um Tatandaan natin pagdating po sa pre-recording, yung mga diniskas natin kanina, yung pagkabit ng cable, yung mga gamit, i-ready nyo na po. Kasi minsan may mga producers na excited, oh recording na tayo. Hmm, nalingawan na kasaksak so kwa, di po man pala naka, naka, naka-ready so uno ka di. So DEW, di pa naka-ready so interface, mali-mali pa pala yung ano yan, routing. ba? Diba? So importante naka-ready na siya. Pagdating naman po dito guys sa ano yan, sa so on recording dapat po stable na po lahat ibig sabihin ready na yung performer or ikaw sabi ni sir kanina one band band dapat memorize mo na yung kanta kasi pag on recording yung nag yung nag-edit hindi masyadong nagpractice yari ka <laughs> ubos oras mo diyan at pagdating po sa post recording or sa final touches po sinabi kanina ni sir ang importante po dito is bago ka mag final touch or let's say pumunta sa mixing magpahinga ka po muna We need to actually to let aside um, our ano yan, passion or let's say yung, yung eagerness natin para makapagbuo ng final record because yung tenga natin pagod na. Ibig sabihin nun, kinakailangan natin magpahinga because we have ear fatigues after ng pre-recording and, uh, sorry, pre-recording and on-recording um, events. So di, sa, sa ganyan pong ano yan, di pwede pong magbadali. So dahan-dahan lang po. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, dito na po nagtatapos ang ating discussion. And thank you very much for watching our 2 hours and <laughs> ayan, 7 minutes live stream po ngayong hapon. So, napakaganda po ng aming usapan. Thank you very much po sa ating mga discussion for today's um, topic regarding po sa installation and setup. So, we hope na marami kayong natutunan, lalong-lalo na yung ating mga mm, emerging audio Producers. So, congratulations sa ating mga discussion. Maraming salamat po. Norby, open mo na yung kamo. <laughs> Patapos na tayo. Okay. So, napakadami nating nat- natutunan ngayong hapon. Okay. Ngayong gabi. It's already 5.50. Sorry, 5.45 in the afternoon. So, tamang-tama na para tapusin natin itong session natin. Okay. So, once again, maraming salamat sa ating mga discussion. Okay. So, ngayon, let's have a counting shout out with our discussion. Okay. So, and... Huling bate and word of thanks po. Okay, let's start po kay Sir Vincent. Sir, huling bate po. Time for you to shout out. <laughs> Come on. Sir, shout All out right. po sa inyo lahat. So, stay, stay alive. <laughs>
Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Vince. Sir Christian, come on. Paling bati po. So, nagbulabog si Vince at nag-email. Kaya so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, may doon ako gani. <laughs> Shout out po sa mga, ano, mga nananatiling nanonood para dito sa ating um, wa- only one <laughs> viewer. Uh, <laughs> inabot na tayo ng dilim. So, yet, ano, napaka, ano naman, napakaganda ng topic. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Christian and Ma'am Chrisel. Rahelia, come on, Ma'am. Yeah, thank you po sa mga nakinig and also um shout out kay Jennifer Polina magluto ka na ng ulam nagugutom na ako. <laughs> oh, shout out sa iyo, Ma'am. Thank you very much, Ma'am Chrisel de Rahelia and Sir Darwin. Yes, thanks for tuning in guys for our uh, live live um uh, basta live <laughs> <laughs> live stream yes, okay Stay safe. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Darwin Carillo. And Ma'am Raya May Bitangkor. Come on, Ma'am. So, hi guys. Thank you for watching. Sana marami po kayo na matutunan. Kahit delayed yung report ko, pasensya na. Okay, lagyan, Ma'am. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Raya. And Ma'am Norby Rostal. Come on, Ma'am. Oh, hey, Mike Mo. Tusi. Hey, para bisa lang dari oh, Mike Dubai. Mo. Kumo sa Dubai. Kumo sa Dubai, ma'am. Come on. Oh, yeah, no la. <laughs> okay. So, hindi na lang kapag aliyan si Bob, nawala na si Mom Norby kanina ka, ma'am. Ah, okay, okay, ma'am. Sige, bati ka po. I-on mo yung mic mo. Dali na patapos na tayo. <laughs> Ayan. Okay, so as tapos na din. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Norby. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, dito na po nagtatapos ang ating discussion uh, regarding po sa ating uh, insulation. Once again po, we have Sir Vincent Pitas na nag ml na po. We have Sir Christian John Perillo. We have Ma'am Crisel Darahelio. We have Sir Darwin Carillo. Ma'am Rhea May Bitangkor and si Ma'am Norby Rostol Yan. Thank you very much po sa inyong lahat and once again this is your host si Chika Santa yung nag-iwan ng Sangkataga in this time of pandemic para tumalinong malapit di adet bad mapakne. Congratulations guys! Woo! Ito na pahaba pero worth naman maraming salamat and keep safe everybody Thank you for watching and see you soon Bye bye guys! Bye guys, bye, bye. God bless. Bye sir. Ingat po palagi. Bye sir. Thank you sir. Ingat kayo sa pag-uwi. Because number is 935-471-814.